And a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael, king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Meloah, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. Thank you. Are we still there, everybody? We are. <laughs> oh, good. There seems to be a deathly silence. Has someone fallen off the perch? Okay. <laughs> We've been reflecting for our two minutes and meditating. So hopefully... Oh, yes. Sorry if I didn't make that clear, Ray. So I think our two minutes is up. Um, this is not about me just asking lots of questions. This is, as we pray, this is hopefully God's speaking to us and so I just want to open it up if um, we'll try and go through the passage you know from the beginning so there's Elijah in the cave and uh, anybody reflecting on just you know what how does God reveal himself to Elijah what does he say how does he say it what's behind you know God's initial contact to Elijah, any reflections? That... The, fir the first thing that occurred to me is that he says to me in the beginning, in, in my, my version, Elijah, what are you doing here? Yeah. And then Elijah gives him an answer. And then it comes along the, the wind, the earthquake and the fire. And then God says to him exactly the same when he appears at the mouth of the cave. Yeah. Elijah, what are you doing here? Yeah. I just wondered why I <laughs> asked him twice. Um, it's very interesting, isn't it? It's almost like we're on a kind of video repeat here. Um, so. Well, I tried to read the second one slightly differently. 
uh, I read the first one as if he was just sort of delivering almost a list of account, an account of what had happened. Um, and I tried to read the second one as if he'd really started to think about what he'd done so mm -hmm. that it was it's, it's becoming the reflection is how I tried to read it. I don't know if that came across or not, yeah. but that's what I tried to do. Oh, thanks for that, Jane. But in, in mine, I'm, it's almost word for word. Yeah, mine's <laughs> identical word for word. Yeah. I just changed the way I read it myself. Yeah. So may I say, in my uh, old version, I quite like the fact that when he says, you know, when he says it and it's just me left, you mm. know, he says, I'm the only one left and now they're yeah. trying to kill me. In the old mm. version, it says, and I, even in italics, I only am left. And it, it, it makes him sound far more desolate. Uh, there is a real stress, isn't there? On yeah. those, on that, that kind of, you know, he, he's mm. really, being very introspective. And that's um, in both the versions too, in the old one, you know, I, even I only, and he, he just stands utterly bereft and abandoned and alone. So we're looking here at God's question to him and his response. Just going back to God's question, what, how do you read, what sort of tone you know, it says this is the word of the Lord came to him. Um, what sort of tone, if you like, do you reckon was behind God's questioning? Um, what did, you well, know, what God did he... God has been so patient with him so far, he might be running a little bit out of patience <laughs> with us. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, if without stating the obvious, uh, yeah. you know, what the dickens are you doing here? Why are you here? Because one thing that maybe Elijah did not know was that Obadiah, in chapter 18, it says that he rescued upwards of a hundred of the prophets of the God of Israel and kept them safe in two caves and even fed them bread and water. So Elijah, in fact, by running away, cut himself off from the rest of the news of Israel. Mm. And it's like that with us sometimes. If we are not kept aware of what's going on in the outer reaches of our world, which is nosely, shall we say, and therefore in at like a ripple of water, it goes out into Samaria and Judea, etc. Um, if we don't keep aware of what's going on in the rest of the world, we miss out. And we think, like Elijah, who is full of I, this and I, that, um, they miss out and they think yeah, they're the only ones being persecuted and in fact they're not. And I think possibly God was feeling a little impatient with Elijah at this stage. Uh, thank you, Ray. Did anybody else pick up that feeling? I think you're nodding, Julia. It wasn't so much picking up that feeling. I, I actually read it slightly differently. Okay. I read it in, in a more optim. I haven't read the book, so I'm sure the commentary might correct me on this. But I, I read it that um, it it was trying to get Elijah to really focus on the way forward. So what is he doing here? What is he expecting out of this. So he's done his two long journeys and he's now here. And I think that there's behind the question of what are you doing here is the fact that God has got something for him to do. Yes. And he's checking in with him to see if he's picked up on that yet. Brilliant. Um, I, I'm convinced you're right. Um, I'm sure there is. But you know, we, we get oh, Elijah's... <laughs> Sorry, John, go on. No, just a Pauline, you know she won't speak up. Pauline's in agreement with you, Julia. Oh, <laughs> she you, didn't Pauline. agree. Go on, go on, encourage she her agreed. to speak for herself. <laughs> you know what she's like. Yeah. I think it's also quite asking him, uh, how did you get to be here as well? Because only by reflecting on how you got to where you are, or how, why you are where you are, are you able then to go forward? 
you know, if you understand what gets you to one place, then you can begin to understand what gets you to the next. So, yes, I agree with Julia, but I also think it is slightly reflective, you know, not just what are you doing? How did you get to be here? What are you doing here in that sense, too? Sort of the, the, almost a why question. Yeah, what, why have you come here in particular? Yes, what, what brought you here? So yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, you know, Elijah gives his litany of answers, doesn't he? Um, but he, he's constantly trying to, I mean, I think he's still in that place of, uh, as Ray, mm. you know, I think where he started in just thinking, you know, poor me, you know, there's a lot of self pity, a lot of self sorrow that, you know, I've, I've done all this for you, Lord. And yet no one else is, is joining me. You know, I'm on my own in this, you know, come on, I've had enough. Um, I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to. I, I think, to... sort of following on, is that, that you know, the whole thing, in, you know, where is, where is this, so Elijah's committed to devastating act and of God saying, I'm not. Well, we're just struggling to hear you a bit there. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't right. know about anybody okay. else. It might be me. No, 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 I was no, struggling no. to. Yeah. We all struggle. Yeah. It, yeah. it oh. might be your garden link. I'm, sh I'm sorry, but it might be. Yeah. 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 Can you hear me now? No. It's a little bit shaky. It, it's cutting you know. in and out, Val. Right. Okay, hang on. Well, I'll, I'll come back to the point after. I'll just carry on this thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but okay. No, that's Thank all you, right. Mate. We, we all heard that bit. That was clear. <laughs> yeah. Go on, try, try again. Try again. Okay. But I was just saying, what, what, you know, Elijah has committed a devastating act. And so God shows him some devastating acts and then says, but I'm not in the devastation. So, you know, God's not in, in those devastating acts. And that may be something for Elijah to, to learn. Mm, but, that's nice. Okay. Yes. So, I mean, that's moving on a bit then, isn't it? And we, we kind of know the story, I guess. You know, it's quite powerful. You know, God comes in all sorts of dramatic ways. Um, interestingly, I think we've been reminded that it's the way God revealed himself to Moses on this very mountain in, you know, when the Israelites were down the bottom and, you know, Moses was up on the mountain for 40 days and when God gave him the covenant, um, and there was fire and smoke and it, you know, it was a, it was a bit of a, uh, a time of terror at that stage. And so, you know, whether, whether Elijah was trying, was seeking for something similar, I don't know, you know, almost like a repeat experience that he knew that God had revealed himself to Moses in that way. So maybe there's something like that for me. Um, and yet, uh, he says, I, I was zealous. And, he, you, you know, if we talk about somebody being a zealot today, it's not particularly a positive image. <laughs> and his zealousness, his being a zealot actually alienated people, just like, you know, the earthquake and everything that Val was referring to. That's a bit like the zealot coming through, but it's often in the quiet of behavior in the whisper that you're going to actually win more hearts than going out and beating through in a zealous way. So it kind of ties in with what Val was saying, really. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, he needs on... to learn to talk with a whisper as well, does Elijah, to win hearts. So we'll come back to, I mean, thanks, Jane. Uh, Ray, were you just uh, I was commenting? just about to say with Jane there, that the word zealous, the it makes the situation comparative to uh, where Saul is a family of Christians and also longing in appreciation of the stoning of Stephen. Zealous, the word is used of Saul, that he was zealous for God, but in a twisted way, not as a Christian. So and I think course, a bit like being James a zealot, saying, a zealot uh, he was wrong, eventually. Uh, yes. And so, you know, there's something actually not so attractive in that sense of, 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 yeah. of being almost just having 
you know, if it's your mission and you're, there's a strength and a kind of an overpowering sense that actually this is what, you know, I'm going to do. Um, but God is saying something different to him, isn't he? So after, after Elijah is given this set of, I don't know about the excuse, or, you know, his commentary of poor me, what does the Lord say to him before he goes, you know, how does the Lord respond? I love the way the Lord's passing by. I'm afraid it made me think of the court of King Caractacus of just passing by. <laughs> like I'm just casually going to just come your way. <laughs> That's me being flippant, I know, but it, it, okay, it's the way so, it was phrased. I'm just going <clears> to <throat> pass by. I'm just coming by your cave now. It makes it's it just, sound quite casual. And the, fra and the phrase before that, Jane? Uh, go forth and st uh, stand <laughs> upon the mount before the Lord. Oh no, hang on, that might be... Mine, my... mine says a bit more. Go out and stand before me. Yeah, go and stand on me. Before the Mountain. Lord, behold the Lord. Yeah. Any, anybody else? Yeah. Uh, mine NIV says, go out and stand on the mountain in the yeah. presence of the Lord. Uh, mine, the old one just says, stand before the Lord. Yeah. Right. So you might say this is semantics, but something of... Presence. You like presence, it gives it more weight. But it's known as the mountain of God, isn't it? Uh, so it is, Pauline. Go on. It is why he was sent there. God, you know, the angel came and fed him because he was going on a long journey to get to this mountain. Yes. Because obviously the God wanted him in his presence to speak to him, maybe tell him off or whatever, I don't yes. know. But yes. At the end of the day... It was God's direction in getting him there. And yeah. people who make pilgrimages, pilgrimages to the mountain because this is where they know God's going to be. Uh, so, so, I haven't been looking So thank you, Pauline. Yeah, so there was something that, you know, we've, we've got a bit of a downer on Elijah at the moment, haven't we? And, and I think God has. But, you know, he had picked up that this was a place where God had revealed himself in the past to his people his leaders um and so you know god is saying yes time to get out the darkness good time to you know whether that was in the middle of the night we we, we read the word of the lord came to elijah but now it's the lord direct the lord says go out you know go outside and stand in my presence you know i'm going to show you myself and so maybe Elijah had an expectation how God was going to reveal that. So then hence, we, you've just been mentioning that the ways that God, you, you know, that the drama of the, you know, the big, the big elements. Um, so we, we, we kind of can take that in. But then, Jane, you were beginning to say at the end of that, what was the whisper all about? Not the chocolate bar. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think when people are quiet, people listen more? You know, they have to tune in. Interesting, mm. Interesting Jane. Pauline's just said they have to listen. Yes. Because you can't hear. I know, I know from, from a teaching point of view, sometimes if you talk quietly yes. to the children, they yes. will all go quiet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I very rarely raised my voice with the children. When I did, they all used to jump because it was so unusual. But yes, the quieter, the more they tune in on you. Mm. And I've only just, you know, I didn't take this in at all when, I'm sorry, Jane, <laughs> when you read it. But verse 13, what other reaction did Elijah have? What other action? He discovered his face. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because that was a sign of that he was ashamed of himself. Yes, yes. He'd had a turnaround point and he covered his face in shame. Was that the beginning of the turning then? Yes. Yes. Mm. I think so. So that's why the question came again. Yes. What's he doing here? Because he hadn't, he hadn't really grasped the point the first time around. I think so. 
And that's when, I, that's when I tried to read it more reflectively, but obviously it didn't come across. <laughs> no, I, I think it did, Jane. I think it did. Um, I tried to make him quieter too. Mm -hmm. So the voice comes again. And, you know, I, I often think, you know, how did that, you know, when we talk of God speaking to us, I don't know. I mean, this is <laughs> uh, how, okay, we've got God speaking through his word, but obviously Moses, uh, Elijah wouldn't have had that. So how do you think that voice came to him? can't say I've never had God clearly speak to me. He may have done, and I may have picked up on it or not, but I can't say, oh, yes, I had a direct. But when people do have those experiences, they it always seems to be in a, a moment of stillness mm -hmm. when they say, you know, I, I was still, maybe they've been rushing around, maybe things haven't been going right for them, you know, because often it seems to happen in a moment of crisis, and it's only when they are still uh that it comes to them and and in the old version it talks about him speaking uh it has a still small voice and it reminded me of the hymn still small voice of calm mm -hmm. yeah forgive and, our foolish ways <laughs> yeah. yes Completely. and i think it's when we're it's like i often have inspirational moments and certainly when i was teaching if i was fretting over something it would invariably happen about five or ten minutes after I woke up in the morning, as if being still had sort of cleared everything away. Mm -hmm. And again, this stillness uh, gives Elijah a chance to reflect and, and it all clears away and he becomes more open uh, mm -hmm. to God and where he needs to go. So I don't think it's actually a unique experience for Elijah. I do think people do have those moments of stillness. No, I, uh, I don't doubt it. That's why I was asking. Anybody else? Any reflection you know, on how God speaks to us? We, we talk about it quite in, simply and quite glibly sometimes. The, the, I, th I think what's behind my question is there's no one, there's no one way um mm -hmm. you know god can communicate to us through all sorts but i think you're right jane that often it is through the stiller quieter places and it's where we've been intentional maybe mm -hmm. i mean elijah here was intentional um he'd been in this cave all night um and there was something new happening um i was just thinking this thing of what else do we know about how God revealed himself in the Old Testament? You know, but he says, you know, were people able to see his face? No. No. They were not, were they? No. You know, basically, no. if you see me, you will die. That there, was, there was no way that, you know, God, the Holy One, was so holy that there was no no way that anybody could see him so maybe there's something here of, uh, of elijah just realizing I, I can't just stay buried in the cave um i've got to go out the, the lord's called me out but I, I cannot go out just as i am otherwise i'm going to be nuked you know <laughs> I, I can't see god in his glory i'll cover my face but maybe in that moment of disorientation or you know vulnerability you know when your face is covered you don't know where you're going maybe those that sense of spiritual awakening or just being open to god in a new way um i think did someone say you know when you've had one sense removed from you you're more attuned aren't you so if he was blinded maybe he, he was more open in his heart you, I think, I think Dot was trying to say something a, a minute ago. Am I right, Dot? I was, but I was, no, I was thinking, God speaks to us all in different ways, depending on, on our actions to him and how he thinks that we, you know, we will hear him. Mm. That's what I was thinking. And, and because mm -hmm. Elijah, you know, was 
was really he was he was really think, thinking of himself a lot. I think you know he was saying, "Oh, I'm on my own now. Who's yeah. going to help me?" Yeah. And of course, the Lord says, "Well, you know, twice he says about going out and stand at the mountain in the presence of the Lord, mm -hmm. hoping that He will hear." The words that the Lord has to say. Andy's saying you're not on your own, but yeah. like, you know, I am here. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a bit like we spoke a few weeks ago about the angels and whether somebody comes and knocks on your front door and then they disappear and they go, you know, they go away. And you've gone with them and then you go in and as Jane said, you sit in a bit of quiet and then you, you think about the conversation you've just had with that person. Mm. And that can take you off in all different yeah. directions. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. We, we had a, we had a, um, a, a what's it called you? ITG. I don't even know what it stands for. Interim. Task no, group. An interim task group. It sounds very big. It isn't. <laughs> <laughs> We had this long conversation last night with Julian and the other the Four Saints team, and um, when when it comes off, when it when it had finished, I was left because uh, I, I find it difficult to switch off sometimes mm. when you've been on any, any any of these. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not good, um, and it was quite good last night. But I sat there thinking for a good half hour afterwards about certain issues that were going through through my mind over what we discussed, you, you will know about the different things. I'm wondering whether we are actually do it, doing things correctly. But anyway, it, it, it just, it, so God does speak to us, I think, in, in all different ways. Mm. Thanks, Can John. I share a bit of scripture with you? Uh, just Ray? Want to, yes. Uh, go James, on. In, his, in his epistle, said that Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Mm. And that later on we have another scripture, the fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Though he fall, as Elijah, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. And earlier, and unfortunately, Elijah didn't have the benefit of these scriptures. <laughs> but it says that the Lord knows the way that I take. And the prayer, Lord, you have searched me and known me. He knows his servants. You know my sitting down, my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Mm. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. And this is must be true of Elijah. It's as though Elijah is the model for this scripture, which of course came a lot later. So helpful, Ray. Thank you. Julia? Sorry, I was just asking Ray what, where that came from, which scripture? Um, which part? Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. Yes, yes. yes. I know there's a okay. hymn with words. That's Psalm 139. Right. Psalm. We had, had a bit on Sunday, didn't we? Yeah. Can, can I say, you will know over last night, I kept going, going through the words, be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. And it came through when Ray was reading those words again. Because God is always with us. And uh, thanks, John. And I'm... Forgive me if I'm speaking too much, but I think what is so beautiful there is that, you know, Elijah, we think of him as this great leader who'd done this great act with the prophets of Baal, but he was someone just like us. So, you know, he was brought down so low. 
and thinking, you know, just, you know, he, his vision had got pretty screwed up. You know, it had gone, it had gone squiffy, forgive me for uh, not the best uh, English. Um, but actually, he, up in James. He, he turned, <laughs> he'd taken his eyes off God, hadn't he? Yeah. And he'd ended up just thinking of himself. Jane, what are you going to say? Yeah, well, it's sort of running along similar lines, you know, sort of Elijah being on his own and God being there for him. It just reminds me of that sort of, it's a mythology story, it's not in the Bible, but the fellow talking to Jesus and uh, saying, you know, you know, you said you'd always be with me, but, uh, you know, they have the two footsteps, you know, two yeah. sets of footsteps on the sand. But whenever I really needed you, you know, there was only, I only saw one set of footsteps on the sand. Mm. And the reply is yes, because when you really needed me, I was carrying you. Mm. I love that story. And it just oh, makes me nice. think of Elijah here now, sort of, he needs carrying a bit, you know, sort of God's sort of telling him he's not on his own. I'm here. Come out and talk to me. <laughs> he does. So the voice comes a second time. Verse 13. What are you doing here, Elijah? So. As John said, you know, it's exactly the same as before. And what about his response? Unfortunately, it's the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. From all we're saying, we, we might have hoped that it might have been a different response. Yes? Yes. So go on, Julia. I mean, what, what does that tell us, maybe? Very <laughs> quite got the lesson yet no <laughs> well He's that's why i changed the reading because if you read it more quietly and reflectively oh, it has a different meaning than the first time round yeah. the first time round if you read it one way it's just oh, well, i did this i did that i did the other and, phew, this is where i am on my own and if you read it more reflectively and more thoughtfully it becomes more ah oh, i did that even oh, in then i did that and oh now i know why i'm on my own but you know Jane, even in our versions, even the, the, the grammar is all no, they're identical. The same. They're identical. It's, it's how you interpret it, it's how you read it that makes the difference. But I personally think that there's a difference in tone, even though the words are the same. I don't think he's in exactly the same place as when he said those words the first time. That's my personal interpretation. So I can quite un accept somebody might think that he still feels the same way, but I think he's more reflective. I think the tone would be more reflective the second time. Uh, fair point. Oh, we, we don't actually... have to, and on that great state, I'm going to have to love you and leave you because my sister has arrived. So I will <laughs> see you all next Wednesday. <laughs> I am not alone. I'm going to get my first hug, first real okay. hug in weeks and weeks. Well, and weeks. give her all love. Enjoy. I will. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thanks for coming. Um, One thing, an interesting parallel, these three questions surely reflect Jesus saying to Peter, lovest thou me? Three times. And three times he is almost given uh, the same instruction. Feed my sheep, feed my lambs, etc. Uh -huh. So I do feel at times that the Lord is so patient with all of us. Three times he gives these instructions. Three times God says to Elijah, eventually, go. And of course, if you're given an instruction to go, you've got to put it in action. Sure. We'll come and sort of finish that last bit in a moment, Ray. But... Do you say God said it three times to him? Have I missed one? No. Well, mine's only said it twice when I'm reading it. Yeah. I mean, I, I take your point. There is something about the repetition. I've only got it twice that I can see. Yeah. Um, but, you know, whether Jane... Uh, it's interesting, that reflection. I, we want him to be different, don't we? We, we? we want that second answer to be different. But on paper... And certainly my version, it's exactly the same. So I, you know, I think he's still got a bit of learning to do. You know, he's still really, I think, looking at himself and his weakness and his aloneness and his, you know, a bit of the poor me syndrome. Mm. Um, 
Ray, you're absolutely right. You know, the fact was, you know, all these other prophets with Obadiah at the beginning of chapter 18, you know, God had his purposes, you know, that were wider than just Elijah. Um, but just before we look at that last bit, would somebody like to read, it just helps us sort of balance it with maybe a story from the New Testament. Could somebody look up Luke chapter 18? Um, there's eight verses. Just to read a little story of the blind man. Um, Luke 18, 35 to 43. Um, anybody who gets there first, it's all yours. <laughs> we can listen. Have you got it, Julia? Yes. Lovely. So Luke 18, 35 to 43. Mine's in the Good News Bible, which I think uh, yeah. John has too. So, 35. As Jesus was coming near Jericho, there was a blind man sitting by the road begging. When he heard the crowd passing by, he asked, What is this? Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, they told him. He cried out, Jesus, son of David, take pity on me. The people in front scolded him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted even more loudly, son of David, take pity on me. So Jesus stopped and ordered the blind man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Sir, he answered, I want to see again. Jesus said to him, then see, your faith has made you well. At once he was able to see, and he followed Jesus, giving thanks to God. When the crowd saw it, they all praised God. Thanks, Julia. Uh, I hope that doesn't disrupt our home to that echo something of uh, of going deeper with, you know, the awareness of, of God in the blind man's case here of, of who Jesus was and what he'd come to bring him. Um, and I think there's something quite, uh, I do believe this was a physical story of healing, but something met metaphorical here too of God wanting to open the eyes of our hearts as he wanted for Elijah I'm sure to to see him in a new way um, and to sort of have his vision enlarged or, or challenged you know, I don't know if anybody else any reflections from from that story I think part of it is about having the courage to ask. Yes. And to ask in faith. Um, and that was something that Elijah wasn't really doing because he'd given up. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, he, he really was at such a low ebb, wasn't he? That yes. He could only see it just from almost like I don't know, through a glass that you wanted to be a, yeah, yeah, he just couldn't see another point of view, could he? Even when yeah. God had shown him initially, he was still just kind of centered just one way. And I wonder how much of that was about feeling guilty for what he'd done, because guilt can blind us to the bigger uh, picture. Interesting. I think we were saying last week that God didn't actually instruct him to kill them all. No. no. So maybe there was a bit of residual guilt hanging over him. Interesting. Yes. Could be. Um, should we finish by looking at the last section? Maybe um, if we just have a moment to read that to ourselves again. Verses 15 to 18.
so we've we've had a lot of repeat um, questions and uh, of of recycled happenings, but here God is telling him something totally new. Um, anybody, any reflections? How God spoke to you through this? What was what was happening here? Um, I think God was making it clear that there were others who could play important roles as kings or as a successor to Elijah. Mm -hmm. And that Elijah's job here was to recognize that and to point them or anoint them. Mm -hmm. But also, it's a new direction for Elijah. He's not going back to Ahab and Jezebel and what have we. He's going somewhere else, and he is anointing these other people to be the tools of God. Now, God doesn't just choose goody-goodies to do his will. There are times when he uses sort of bad people to um, to do his will. We think, for example, of the um, Israelites who were enslaved in Babylon, and yet the king of Babylon was used to send the Israelites back to their home ground. Nebuchadnezzar was a bad king, good for the Assyrians, but not good for anybody else. And here, I think, uh, God shows that he has a use for all of us. It may be a slightly different direction to that which we have become accustomed. And also, of course, as Julia said, he is there uh, to anoint Elisha mm -hmm. to be his um, successor. Yeah. Thanks, Ray. And how do you think he, f how would that have made him feel, do you think? I think he would be renewed frightened. and useful. <laughs> well, I, I, I looked at it. I looked at it as a test, almost. Sorry, this is this is uh, Elijah yeah. suddenly telling him to go back, or not go back, go go to these places and start anointing people and telling them that they're, they're going to be the king. Dear me, <laughs> that must take some bravery. There's there's quite a few things going on here, aren't there? Yeah. And Ray, that was really helpful. So we've got Jehu the king. The king of of Israel, you know, of um, that's one thing, isn't it, to be king over Israel? But you're right, John. You know, king of another nation. Yeah. So that takes some guts, doesn't it? Mm. Um, king of. And yeah. so, you know, there is real. There's a requirement for someone who is need, who is able to step up to that. And so there's something very specific and very. Uh, you know, God, God needed someone like Elijah to do that. But then there's also Elisha. Um, and by inference, by implication, there's, there's a sort of handing on of the mantle, isn't Well, quite literally. You know, he was asked later on to, you know. Um, and uh, again, how would that have rested with Elijah, do you think? That sense that maybe his... Sorry. primary role was being transferred or coming to an end, I don't know. Look that way. And and what spirit do you think he was able to I mean, do you think he was in a new place to be able to do that? It doesn't really say what his reaction was, or does it? But he went and did it. I was going to say he tells him all this because yeah. he did it. Yeah. Um, so, well, you know, the bit we haven't uh, read, it <laughs> does go on and it says, you know, he went and did it yeah uh, i think as yeah. well maybe that was part of the lesson for Roger, because gone off in his own thing you know acting a losing you a little bit again val i'm sorry she's frozen yeah i think the garden isn't um 
<laughs> yeah. Sometimes works, but sometimes it doesn't. I think we got her drift there. Yes. That... It's a sort of put, slight put down. Not, he's got to learn humility, is what I think yeah. that is about. Is that it's not, he's been all this me, me. It's all about me and I'm feeling self-pity. And now he's, he's being told that actually going forward, it's about all these other people. And do you think he was able to do that with a good spirit? I think so. I think he knew he'd learnt his lesson. Yes. I think so. Yes. Um, I'm just reading on a bit. You know, Elijah went up to Elisha and threw his cloak around him. I don't think that was a, an angry throw. I think that was probably no. a, you know, an embra a kind of just saying, look, what's mine is yours. God mm -hmm. is giving you this new anointing. So I, you know, I, I would really like to think so. Yeah. And, and I think it tends to, to give that drift, um, the, the passage. And, and I think that's such an important lesson in life that, you know, when we feel, it's when we feel alone and, um, you know, unheard or we've battled on and on and on, you know, it's ever so easy to, to, to see how much we've created that ourselves because we won't involve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Val's talking to me as well here. Yeah. I think it also shows God's will that when we come to the end of our lives, the work doesn't stop. Yes. Yeah. That there is always yeah. somebody to take over. Yeah. Yeah. And I think taking on the mantle of Elijah, Elisha became that carrying on of the work. Mm. It's like many, many ministers do a lot of sowing and they don't necessarily see the harvest of that sowing that is for their successor to pick up. And I think it's something we have to hold on to. Mm. That a much loved friend, a previous vicar, a previous minister of some sort, or a previous bishop for that matter, they retire, they die, they move on one way or another. But the work carries on. And yes, the harvest may be ready, and the labourers may be few, but they work accordingly. Thank you, Ray. And uh, we mustn't just forget the last verse 18 as well. You know, maybe God just had one more thing to show Elijah. Not just those hundred prophets with Obadiah, but... 7,000 who had actually remained faithful to him, who hadn't bowed to Baal and given their, you know, allegiance to him. And I, I just wonder, you know, how much Elijah had been aware of that, or if he'd somehow been blinded. Um, so I think where you started an earlier comment, Ray, that was sometimes we just don't know that's right. Um, we tend to think we're just in our little patch here in Nosley and, you know, there's only so many of us or whoever, wherever. Um, but God actually has a, a much bigger, uh, bigger plan. And maybe there's may, many more people that we perhaps we don't know who, who are hungry, even in our own patch. Um, and it's a case of just continuing to ship to sow, to use that metaphor you've given us and to just be prepared to, to just be God's light where we are. Mm -hmm. um, our time is drawing to a close but anybody else um, who's not spoken so much I could put David or Bob or Rob in the hot seat but don't worry I never do that <laughs> but if anybody else who wanted to share anything please. Um, uh, uh, Raymond, Raymond in, that, in that last profound statement that you've just made when you mentioned about retired vicars sewing, I'm sorry, I <laughs> I flashed into my mind the needle and thread. 
<laughs> of Vickers, <laughs> ex Vickers sewing. I had the wrong sewing in mind. <laughs> Very good. It actually made me smile, right? Um, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a parable in another parable in there somewhere. In there somewhere absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> the eye of a needle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Oh, good. Uh, good to finish on a a lighter note, but um, just praising God for the richness of His yeah. Word. New class. Um, and may we all seek to to just stay longer with God, to just be in His presence and let Him yeah. direct us, speak to us, and change us. Okay. I think this is about vision for the future. Um, you know, for Elijah, I think it could be for us as well um john's referred to this meeting last night um we've been meeting every two weeks so david john and me are in it from st from st mary's and you know this is calling us into you know a a, a braver new world for the future i mean this is for everybody isn't it we're, we're all in this together but uh, as leaders you know we are hopefully listening where is God leading us so please keep praying for us as we pray for you I think there's one the, the the last well what seems to be the conclusion in the actual book um, is something we've not really sort of touched on but that basically that we do go into dark times we do things but no matter what we do God does remain with us and will not leave us um, when we have failed in our trust you'll still be faithful um, you'll always be there for us to go back to and to pick us up thank you David I'm just looking at that and that's amen It'd be a lovely place just to finish with in prayer maybe um, you know because I think that was Elijah's story, wasn't it, David? You know, he had lost his grip on God. Um, he'd sort of slipped in his, his vision and his understanding of his great God. But God didn't let go of him. He still had a plan for him. And was still faithful. So, um, I'm going to pick on somewhere in a moment, maybe. Uh, John, would you like to lead us in a, a, a prayer, maybe, if... I'll do it, yeah, but, but you, you have started in the last few weeks to almost emulate Julian. <laughs> and it's, oh, not the best, it's not the best bit, I, I think. Oh, uh, if people don't want to say anything, then I think we should be leaving them not to say anything, but to gather their thoughts. Um, I could very easily say, no, not today, thank you, because I'm like that. Um, pick on somebody else. I won't, but I'm, I'm, I'm just sowing seeds, as David, as Ray said before. Thank you. Okay. So we'll close our eyes and we'll think about things. Lord, we need to thank you so much for everything that you give us, for everything that you do for us. And yet time and time and time again, we let you down. Mm. These sessions, Lord, these weekly sessions that you inspire us to come to and attend. And whether we say nothing or we voice our thoughts, we know, Lord, that you are there guiding us, prompting us. So we give you all the thanks Lord, that we can for doing that for us. Yes, Lord. I'm just going to pause for a moment and, and ask people to bring before God in silence of their own hearts, anybody or any situation that they want to present to God now. Yes, Lord. And finally, Lord, we'd just like to thank you 
for his dedication to you, for wanting to do this, to wanting to encourage people to learn more and more and more about you. So Heavenly Father, keep us safe now as we go off in different directions, probably in our own homes. But be with us. Give us them thoughts that encourage us to come back again and again. Hmm. We ask all these prayers through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Uh, Bye, Ray. Ray, thank you for joining us and leading. My pleasure. Uh, it's a pity uh, we can't see you, Ray. <laughs> I know, it is. But thanks, Ray. Uh, John, thank you for your wonderful honesty. Yeah. You're, you're, you're very... <laughs> thank you. I know I'm very direct. He, know, he knows what I'm like. <laughs> well, I know, but uh, thanks for just being you. And uh, I hope... Yeah. yeah, it's... Yeah, we can think different ways of how we close and... and no, no, I, I understand that. And, and, and some people, and you know, and I know, some people are more than happy just to come, sit, listen, take it all in, and say nothing, and, that, and then the good work comes when they're probably sitting quietly on their own. Like we spoke about before, the still it's, small voice of God. Exactly that. And, and I, I know in, in many situations throughout life, you know that, that people put other people on the spot. You can put me on the spot. I haven't got a problem. <laughs> you on the spot. You know, she, 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 wouldn't, she wouldn't like that. Um, and I know Julian does it all the time. If, if one person says one word, he'll say, would you like to carry on with that? <laughs> or would you like to say, explore that a bit more? Uh, and I know his hooks that, that, he, that he, he throws in. Yeah. With me, I've just said to him, no, I'm finished, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Indeed. It's, it's, um, yeah. Yeah, we, we all know one another, that, and that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, I, I'm happy with that. Okay. Yeah, it's, lovely we can, it's lovely we I can be just free to, to come, all of us, so hopefully yeah. Yeah. are just comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, our, our heart is that others could also feel free to join us. It, in one sense, it gets harder as you go on. You know, Indeed, it does. Yeah. Something. yeah. Um, and so I was just talking to Barbara and Rob at the beginning. Um, you know, this is our eighth session now, I believe. And we've, so we've had a good run of two months. Yeah. Um, we are definitely going to stop in August. How do you feel generally about just pushing on through July? Or do you feel you've had enough for a bit? <laughs> I, agree. I don't know. Um, you're welcome to comment now or <clears throat> by email. Pauline just, just whispered to me, we're okay because we've got the daylight, we, we think. So we, we, we carry on reading that and then talking about different bits. Or, and it's surprising mm -hmm. how much in the daylight pops into, the, into these discussions yeah. that we have. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway. But you're definitely having a break in August anyway. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Well, um, well, so just to I, let you know. Yeah, I'd encourage you, us to carry on if we can for July. Yeah, carry on to the end of July. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are we happy with that? And um, I yes. think there's a kind of rhythm yeah. and we'll largely get to the end of the book and then have a break. I think that's, I think we're being encouraged as ministers to, you know, whether we go on away or not, just to have a break and appreciate not everyone's able to do that. But, it's a break. Um, no. Uh, Pauline just whispered to me, we're not going anywhere. Well, sure. <laughs> we're not going anywhere, no. Um, but even if you're not going anywhere, that sense of, uh, of rhythm of life, I would encourage everybody to try and think, what might you be able to do that is a bit different, that yeah. just gives a sense of stopping something, starting yeah. something, doing yeah. something different that, that gives you know, us in our spirits something different to just frame... Yeah. Uh, the week or for a couple of weeks. Yeah. 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 No, I, I think that's absolutely right, Hugh, because otherwise burnout is very easy. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and maybe that was part of the thing for Elijah. He burnt out. <laughs> I think he did. Simple yeah. as that. I mean, you know, it's not rocket science, is it? No. It's, it's called being human. <laughs> yeah. 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 
Yeah. Well, he did four marathons anyway, wasn't it? Was it four marathons? Yeah, I think we, he did pretty well. He did pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, thank you anyway, Hugh. I yeah. have to go. So nice to see everyone. See you on Bye. Sunday. Bye. 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 You're all looking well. You honestly look. I thought they all look well. Yeah. Yeah. So do you. So do you. And I've had a shave. I've, I've had a shave. Yeah. Me too. I'm getting oh. my hair cut. Oh, you <laughs> as well. Just need a haircut now and that'll be all right. I'm getting a haircut next week, John. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, but, yeah. Next Tuesday for me. Next Tuesday for me. Next oh, Wednesday very cool. Oh, I can see. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good week next week then. <laughs> you can tell I've been doing my own. <laughs> He doesn't trust me. I don't trust Pauline. I've never been swiped. Don't know you yeah. you now. Isn't it hard in the mirror? Oh, in the mirror, yeah. trying yeah. to cut it when, you, when yeah. you're back to front. Yeah. yeah. You're going, oh. Yeah. Anyway, really good to see you all. Okay. All right. Take Bye. care. Great. God bless. Bye-bye, uh, everybody. Have a good bye. few days. See you soon, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. God bless. Okay. Eve.